G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for a, another video uh, going through my power rankings, which is something I've been doing every three weeks or so. Um, I would have done one just before I left on my trip, and now that the buy rounds have gone past and I'm catching up a little bit up to date about how things have gone over the last few weeks, I thought it'd be fun to compile my power rankings for the conclusion of round 15. So the format for the video will be, I will be going from first down to the 18th in terms of the order in which I rank teams on quality and I guess the chance of which I sort of rate them as a realistic premiership or you know finalist chance. So again, these things are always a little bit arbitrary. It's not purely a form rating and it's certainly not a ladder prediction as well because there are so many different factors when uh, assessing or predicting the final ladder. Things like fixture, etc., come into play, uh, which has kind of inspired another video I'm gonna do at some point this week on the channel, which will be analyzing the finals race. It's interesting sort of grouping teams in terms of categories uh, this year. I do think we have a clear uh, top four and a pretty clear bottom two or three. I'd probably even extend that to a bottom four. So the top four and bottom four are clear, but there's a whole shit mix in the middle uh, where it's very, very hard to predict what's gonna happen uh, in the future. But instead of analyzing you know, the, the strength of fixture or anything right now, I'm gonna go through and rank the teams based on how good I think they are. Before we crack straight into the video, guys, uh, I will point out that roughly about 54% of the people who watch my videos have subscribed to the channel, which is great. Thank you so much for your support. The other 45 or odd percent of you, if you could do me a favor, if you enjoy watching the content, it would mean a lot to me. It would really help the channel out if you just hit subscribe. It will help me in the algorithm, and the bigger this channel gets, the more I will be able to invest time into this in the future. So if you do me a favor and hit subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're enjoying the content, it would be much appreciated. Cool, so like I said, we're gonna crack into the these power rankings and uh, as I said there's a consensus top four in my opinion as well but I will probably separate the top two and since I last done this video I think the gap between Collingwood and Port Adelaide as my best two teams of the competition has narrowed a little bit only because Collingwood have probably put their foot off the gas a little bit in recent times which I'm you know, not necessarily reading into and Port Adelaide have really accelerated and beaten some really quality teams and they're on something like an 11 game winning streak. So I have Collingwood as my best team as I said they're, they're kind of coasting a little bit but in a way that is still beating almost everyone in front of them. They've won four of their last five with just the one loss to the Melbourne Footy Club, a team I obviously rate very highly. The fact that they've beaten uh, Port Adelaide earlier in the year is probably the difference between the two on in terms of current form. It, that was a long time ago, but you know, until proven otherwise, Collingwood is still the benchmark of the competition. But right behind them is Port Adelaide, who I think are probably probably the form team of the competition, if not the best team right now. But again, this is different to a form ranking. I'm trying to rank who do I think is better. And at the moment, until proven otherwise, I still think that's Collingwood. Port Adelaide though have won all of their last five. They've had wins over the Demons, Dogs, and Cats. And they've also had a win at the G against an improved Richmond side. And they beat the Hawks by 55 uh, sometime in their last five. So they're not putting a foot wrong and uh, a genuine premiership contender this year. In third and fourth, I've got Brisbane and Melbourne. Melbourne have slipped down a little bit, but we'll talk about Brisbane first. They have lost two of their last five, including a loss to the Hawks at the MCG, where they're you know, pretty inconsistent, and they did lose to the Crows, who are pretty strong at home as well. So nothing to be too alarmed about. Uh, in their three wins of the last five, they've beaten St Kilda, uh, Sydney, and the Suns. But you know, we know over a long period of time, they're a pretty proven known quantity, and clearly the third best team in the competition right now. Melbourne does slip behind them. I've had Melbourne as my second best team of the year, uh, throughout most of this season, but they've been a little bit indifferent. I think they've dropped three of their last five. It feels like a mid-season slump to me. They've lost to the Cats, the Power, and the Dockers in that time. The Cats and the Power are pretty strong teams. You obviously, the Geelong are a little bit Jekyll and Hyde at times this year. Equally with Fremantle, a very mixed bag, but we know on their day, they're a very good side, and they seem to like playing Melbourne, but they've beaten the Blues unconvincingly, and the real outlier here is that they've beaten Collingwood in that time too. So, Overall, mid-season slump, they've dropped down to fourth, but still one of those four clear best teams for me. This is where the rankings get hard because I feel like from about fifth to about 14th, uh, or yeah, 14th on the ladder, there's a bit of a crapshoot. It's actually pretty hard to differentiate. And I think the reason for that is all of these teams at some point have looked great and at other times have looked a little bit unconvincing. There's reasons to doubt all of these teams, but there's also been some really good form here. So picking fifth was really, really difficult. And I'm gonna go with a bit of a left field one here. And I'll say the Crows have earned fifth spot on the current rankings. But again, it's so tight in this group that this is subject to change. But they're currently eighth with seven and seven. In their last five, they had that huge win over the West Coast Eagles. Again, how much do you take out of that? But more importantly, they beat the Brisbane Lions at Adelaide. So really making that Adelaide Oval a bit of a fortress this year. They were disappointing on the road against the Suns and Dogs. And this is when I allude to all, all these teams have showed some disappointing form in recent weeks. 
But the big convincing performance for me was against Collingwood. I think this is one of the biggest tests in football. They nearly won that game. They were leading, you know, halfway through the last quarter or whatever it was. And in general, they've had some big scalps this year with the Lions, Power, and the Saints. All at Adelaide Oval, of course. But I think the fact that they could match it with Collingwood at the MCG shows real growth for this footy club. Just behind them, I have the Western Bulldogs, and this one I, I struggle with because the Bulldogs did beat Adelaide sometime in the last five, and they beat them by about 44, 45 points. But the Dogs have had some indifferent form of their own. They've dropped three of the last four against Gold Coast, and then the Cats and the Power. So some relatively strong teams in the Cats and the Power, and Gold Coast can be good on their day. They've beaten North and, uh, of course, the Crows in that time, and they're probably their lack of big scouts this year is what has them below Adelaide for me at this point in time. Essendon, another side that is a little bit tricky to read, and again, it's hard not to get caught up into a bit of recency bias because their last performance against Fremantle in Perth wasn't a great indicator of the team that they've been for most of this year. We did ha They did have a pretty... You know, tough run of fixtures there where they had a bit of a losing streak and then they snapped out of that by beating some average teams, got a little bit of reward for effort. They've beaten Carlton, North, West Coast and Richmond in recent times. And the fact that they have beaten the D's on a neutral venue this year in Adelaide, uh, that's their big scalp. So I do think there is a finals quality side in there. Whether they actually make it is a little bit more dependent on their fixture, but they're still, I'd say, the seventh best side in the competition. But it is a little bit murky, this part of the ladder, so bear with me. In eighth spot, we've got the reigning premiers, Geelong, who currently sit ninth on the ladder with seven and seven. And again, just a big Jekyll and Hyde team this year. In the last five, they've had good wins over Melbourne and the Bulldogs, which are, you know, good wins on paper. They lost to the power in Adelaide and, you know, Port Adelaide is probably the form team of the competition right now. But their two more concerning losses were against the Giants at GMHBA. The Giants, you know, bottom six to seven uh, on the ladder right now. And Fremantle is a tougher one to assess because they have been fairly solid in Perth and they've had some really good performances and some really average ones as well. So I think Geelong stabilizing at eight. If you ask me to offer a prediction, I think Geelong will climb this power rankings because I think they will put the foot down on the gas as the season progresses as they so often do but on exposed form I don't have them higher than Essendon. Then I've got St Kilda down in ninth and uh, this probably is a little bit harsh because they are currently fifth on the ladder but their form has flagged quite poorly in the last five weeks or so with losses against the Hawks, Tigers and the Lions. In that time they did beat the Swans and the Giants narrowly but we've seen a real drop off in form from the Saints and for me, I wouldn't feel confident at the moment tipping them against any of the sides that I have above them right now on the ladder. So again, dependent on fixtures, they probably should still make finals from what I've looked at. But for now, current rankings, the ninth best side. In 10th spot, I've got Richmond climbing quite a lot in my rankings. They're 12th on the ladder and they were flagging badly this year. It looked like season over at one point, but they've won three on the bounce against St Kilda, the Dockers and the Giants. Three sides that on their day are pretty decent this year. Then they had a couple of close losses to Port and Essendon, two sides, you know, Port Adelaide, one of the best in the competition right now. And Essendon, who are currently, you know, uh, sixth on the ladder or something like that, maybe seventh. Under McWalter now as coach, we have seen an uptick in form, in particular, an ability to win some close games, which was, you know, a bit of a feature of the late Hardwick era. They struggled to win those close games. Maybe we're seeing a resurgence for Richmond right now, but I'm trying not to project what I think is going to happen, and it's based on what I'm seeing right now. And Richmond on their day are a pretty handy football side, and within the mix to at least compete for finals late in the season this year. In 11th spot, I've got the Gold Coast Suns, who are actually 10th on the ladder, uh, and they've actually won three of their last five. They beat up on the Hawks last week. They've beaten the Crows and the Dogs, so two good opponents in that time. They did have a bad loss to Carlton, which was a bit out of the blue. Um, it was a massive outlier in terms of both Carlton and Gold Coast form, and they did have a seven goal loss to the Lions. So you could justifiably have the Suns higher than Richmond, considering as well that they beat Richmond earlier this year. But some of what goes into my, my rankings, rightly or wrongly, is a little bit of trust in a football club. And I still don't have that quite with the Gold Coast Suns. And I have a little bit more with Richmond. In 12th, I've got Fremantle, who have been an absolute mixed bag this season and are probably one of the hardest teams to pick this year in terms of which side is going to come out one week. Uh, versus the next and it's been a real mixed bag of form in the last five they've had good wins over the demons cats and then a fairly good win in Perth over Essendon on the weekend. But in that time, 
a, a bad home loss to Richmond, a side that has been struggling up to this point. Yes, they've seen uh, an improvement in form in recent weeks, but it's too early to tell whether that's actually meaningful. And then the, the big one was the big loss against the Giants. Sean Darcy's back into the side now, and um, I've, I've got some faith that they will continue this improved form. I do think they have a relatively tough fixture in the back end of the year, but it's a tough one because I just named a side that's beaten the Demons, Cats, and Dons, and I don't really have them that close to my top eight on quality. But if they can put together some consistent form, that's why they'll surge up the rankings. In 13th, I have the Giants, uh, who have seen a huge improvement in recent weeks in terms of their form. Their best wins in particular were against the Fremantle Dockers uh, by 70 points, a really convincing win over a side that you know finished fifth last year and at times has looked really good. And then, of course, they beat the Cats at GMHBA Stadium, which is probably one of the hardest things to do in football. There was also a win against North in that time. The losses in the last five have been uh, to the Saints by 12 points and an improved Richmond not too long ago. So we're seeing a big improvement from a side that was, you know, really struggling. Adam Kingsley struggling to get his brand of footy clicking at this new club, but I think we might be starting to see the green shoots of that. And we could see just a consistently improving GWS side at the back end of this year. But there's been some unconvincing form up to this point, and I'm trying to capture most of the first 15 rounds. And I don't think the Giants have done enough to rise higher than this in my rankings. In 14th, I've got the Sydney Swans, the injury-depleted Sydney Swans. Again, a very hard team to, um, to get a read on. Obviously, their most recent win was 170 points against the West Coast Eagles. And uh, I, I, I think we all have to accept that there's only so much you can take out of that. Got some quality players. Heaney, Golden, they did whatever they wanted against West Coast. And they were good enough too because they're great footballers. But if you ignore that, you know, in their last five, they've had a close win over North Melbourne. They beat the Blues, you know, congrats. Uh, and they've lost to Brisbane and St Kilda. So haven't really done enough to really rise up my rankings. Bizarrely, you know, with that huge percentage boost, and if they can get some consistent uh, injury luck from this point out in the season, they're a chance for finals simply because of that percentage boost. But on current form, they haven't really been impressive for me this year and are 14th in my rankings. So that's the glut of teams that are bizarrely still kind of in the finals mix. But again, I'll elaborate that on that in a future video. So we're gonna talk about the bottom four now, and I have Hawthorne as the best of that bunch. Uh, they're currently 16th, and uh, I think since that 116 point win over the Eagles at, in Tasmania, that was a bit of a turning point for Hawthorne. We've seen a real improvement in the way they play their footy. Uh, they beat the Saints the following week, and they beat the Lions at the MCG not too long after that. So some d reasonable scalps in there. They get touched up by Port, and then we also saw James Sicily, who's you know one of the form players of the competition right now, gets taken out of that side uh, due to suspension, and they had a bad loss to the Gold Coast Suns. So. I am not shocked to see a young side like Hawthorne be inconsistent, especially when you take out one of their best players and leaders. But I will say overall, they've certainly shown a bit more compelling form than Carlton, um, who have now 15th on the ladder. They're five wins, eight losses, one draw. And that season has slipped bizarrely since the first month of the season. What were they? Uh, three wins and one draw from the opening month. The season has slipped away really, really poorly. Uh, their big win over the Suns recently was quite an outlier. It has been a little tricky run in recent weeks. They've lost to the Pies and the Demons. You know, you'd expect that. They lost to Essendon by six goals. They lost to the Swans by five goals as well, who were probably around the mark for bottom four around that time. So some indifferent form from Carlton. It'd be interesting to see Carlton and Hawthorne actually play each other on current four. But I think in terms of trajectory, I think Hawthorne is better right now. Then we've got our two clear worst teams in the competition right now, and I'm sure North fans will be disgusted to be grouped with West Coast right now because there is still a big gulf between the two sides. But we'll start with North Melbourne, the 17th, the 2-12. and 12. They started the year at 2-0 and 0 with wins over West Coast and Fremantle. So their season has you know, really fallen away poorly. They dropped all of their last five, but they have shown some improved form. And that's why there's such a clear gulf between North and West Coast right now. They got within a goal of Essendon and Sydney. They got within six goals of Collingwood and they lost by 21 points against the Bulldogs. So that, that competitiveness that, you know, West Coast, for instance, is striving for, North Melbourne are achieving that right now. And that's why they're so much better than West Coast who I won't even need to bang on about it. They're 18th with one and 13. They've lost their last five games by an average of 104 points. Between the Adelaide loss and the Sydney loss on the weekend, their last two away games, they conceded a combined total of 379 points. So that's all I need to say. I've done separate videos banging on about the Eagles. 
That'll do for now. But there you go, guys. That is my rankings for, uh, you know, the power rankings after 15 rounds. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. These always get a little bit of, uh, you know, conversation going in the comments. So I welcome that once again. And perhaps Adelaide fans will accept that I don't actually hate your football club because I've now put them in fifth and I really enjoy watching Adelaide play. Not so much two weeks ago, but yeah. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.